All right, hi everybody, and welcome to CSURams.com, along with Kevin McGlue, <laughs> filling in for Mark Driscoll here this week. Brian Roth with you, Colorado State, coming off that 47-21 win over Northern Colorado to go to 2-1 and one on the season. And Kevin, obviously the big story from last Saturday afternoon, Colin Hill, the true freshman, making his debut at Colorado State. And does it get any better than that? No, it really doesn't. And again, when you're starting your third consecutive different starter at the quarterback position, you always wonder, you know, how's this going to translate? What are the ripple effects going to be throughout the team? And I think that also spoke to the resiliency of this team, particularly on the offensive side of the football. You heard Marty English, uh, the defensive coordinator for the Rams, saying, you know what? He even provided confidence for that defense. He's just got that leadership intangible and really was able to come out, not only throw the football, but the big 51-yard right. touchdown run. Uh, it was impressive. And again, that's not an easy task for a young kid, especially under the microscope like that, to come out and flourish. That's exactly what he did. He had 315 yards passing for Hill on Saturday against the Bears, threw to nine different receivers, four different pass catchers, caught touchdowns in that contest, so spreading the wealth. Now, listen, we understand it was against an FCS opponent. It was against UNC. Oh, the Bears could be pretty good this year in the big sky. It wasn't necessarily the competition we're going to face coming up on Saturday, but the fact of the matter was Colin Hill was very, very good, and of course he's going to start a quarterback at Minnesota on Saturday. Meanwhile, the defense, look, they shut out UTSA in the second half two weeks ago. Last week they shut out UNC in the first half, so all told four straight quarters of shutting down their opponent. Yeah, and it's been fun to watch in the sense that this has been a really up-tempo, aggressive approach that Marty English has implemented, and he said, hey, look, if that's what it takes, if, if it needs to be guys guys flying around to the football, then that's fine. That's what we're going to do. Hopefully you'd like to be able to uh, adapt some of those schemes to, to be a little bit more passive in certain situations, but they're getting to the quarterback. They're getting that penetration into the, the offensive backfield, and I think they've been thriving in that situation. Obviously, you're going to be going up against a big physical offensive line this week in the University of Minnesota, so they're going to have to have their best performance of the season up front. Yeah, you know, you look, though, at the second half of that game last week, and obviously, look, you're, you're up 38-0 at halftime. Human nature says you're not going to come out as fired up in the second half, and I, I think we saw that with the team. Mike Bobo, though, did not take that too kindly, and he talked to us on the post-game show and talked to the other reporters. Even on Monday, he was still not really happy about his team in the second half. I mean, how much does that go into motivating him this week? Well, I certainly think it is going to be a motiva motivating force. So we were in that room, you know, after that had transpired, and yeah, everybody was happy. You go to two and one, you get a really nice win. You go out and do a lot of the things you're supposed to do uh, against an FCS team, but that was one of the first things he mentioned was, hey, we played great, but we cannot afford to have two quarters like that ever again. It just can't happen. And I think right now you're looking at a real stern reminder of you're going to have to string together four really solid quarters, not just defensively, but on both sides of the football. Yep. So Minnesota coming up this weekend. Again, an early start. We're calling it breakfast with the Rams on Saturday. Kevin, we're going to have to get you out of bed and drag you over the stadium. It's a Minnesota team that's off to a 2 0 start. They beat Oregon State in the opener and then they beat Indiana State two weeks ago. Now they've had a bye week leading into this contest. And their second half against Indiana State was kind of like the second half the Rams had against UNC. But we know this is a big team. You already alluded to that fact offensively. They go about 320 across the board offensively. And then a really experienced quarterback in Mitch Leidner. Yeah, Mitch Leidner, he's a big kid too. And that's uh, one of the things they talk about is you know, he can run the ball, he can bowl you over, he can be his own blocker out there on the field, but he's a good game manager. And it's not as if they talk about him being an explosive playmaker, but he has those capabilities. They just love the way that he manages the game. He's got a lot of a lot of experience under his belt. He's grown and grown into this role. They feel very confident with him at the helm. And again, you got a big offensive line for him to work in front of. Yep, and it's a defense for Minnesota, only giving up 336 yards per game, 99 of those on the ground. It's a Rams team we know is going to have to run the football effectively on Saturday to come up with a win. All right, that'll do it for Kevin McGlue, who will be joining Mark Driscoll and myself in Minneapolis. Come Coming up here this weekend, I'm Brian Roth saying so long. Make sure to tune in to the Colorado State Sports Network Saturday morning. We're on air at 8 a.m. Kickoff at 10 from Minneapolis. Set.